Have you ever prayed But never got an answer And wondered if God was really there Did you feel all hope was gone But in his time he came along And answered the prayer you thought was gone there is no prayer to song, for God hears them all. The answer may not be just what you want, but He always knows what's right, even when we think it's wrong. Just remember, there is no prayer to shall receive no matter what it is I still believe there is no prayer too small and even when we fall he gives us just exactly what we need there is no prayer too small Just what you want But he always knows what's right Even when we think it's wrong Just remember There is no prayer to small No prayer to small He always Hi, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach and the host of You Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I want to um, discuss something with you. And let me be crystal clear. Imagine, just imagine being buried alive. You're in a coffin, but you know you're not dead. You don't know how to get out of that coffin. You try lifting the lid, but the lid won't budge because the dirt is too heavy. You then try banging on the lid, so maybe somebody will start digging their way down towards you. This is what it's like to find yourself at the lowest point of alcohol and drug addiction. You know you need help, you know you can't do it on your own, but you don't know where to turn. In reality, there are people standing by your grave. You just don't know that. You just want to give up. Usually, though, people don't give up. Where I should say, usually, though, people don't think about death when they're habitually abusing drugs and alcohol. In order to feed an addiction, you have to be great at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, did it ever cross your mind while you were abusing drugs and alcohol that maybe, just maybe, you might overdose and take something away from, from you that God gave you called life? And if that's not bad enough, take something away from the people that count on you most, people like your mother, your father, your husband, your wife, your brother, your sister, your children, your grandchildren. Please give me a call at 844-405-HELP and let me help you take your life back before your life is gone. And if you can't get a hold of me, call Larry Geis at 516-458-2741. Larry Geis and I 
tell folks like you, it doesn't matter where you came from, it doesn't matter where you've been. What matters most is that you're here looking for a better today and a brighter tomorrow. Larry, guys, can be found at www.odysseyconsultant.org. He has over 30 years' experience as a life coach, as an addiction recovery coach. Larry, guys, 516-458-2741. Folks, don't forget to utilize an email. Each and every morning, pick up your slippers from under your bed and pray to God. Thank God for another beautiful day, another day alive. Uh, thank God for having a home, clothing, food, and for having a family. Ask God for guidance and direction, mercy and forgiveness. Each and every day, thank God that you are alive. An email, K-N-E-E-Mail, your personal connection. Put on those slippers and walk with God 24-7. 10 ways to show compassion. Compassion is genuine sympathy for, uh, for hardship or suffering that other people are experiencing and a desire to ease that pain. There are many different ways to show compassion for, other, for people uh, in your family or people around you. <clears throat> the important thing is that it comes from here, your heart. Ignore the differences and find uh, commonalities to help you relate to someone else is going through. Whether you're interacting with a friend, colleague, peer, patient, or family member, here are some ways that you can demonstrate your compassion. Start with yourself is always number one. The best way to learn how to be compassionate towards others is to be compassionate with yourself. Praise yourself for the successes, even things that uh, as little as maybe even making your bed. That and forgive yourself for all your mistakes. Focus on your strengths and your positive qualities. Number two is communicate verbally and non-verbally. Make eye contact. Keep your body turned toward the person speaking and listen quietly. You might also practice active listening, which involves paraphrasing what you've just heard and ask open-ended questions to send the message that you are ready to hear and you are listening. Touch, if appropriate, of course. A gentle touch goes a long way. Be sure to touch, uh, that the touch is welcome. Ask, ask first, try, would you like a hug? Or may I uh, touch your shoulder? Gently touch and assist to balance physical, mental, emotional, spiritual well-being. A soft touch to the hand or shoulder during a conversation helps demonstrate your genuine care and your concern. Encourage others is number four. When we praise and encourage others, we can sometimes kickstart a positive spiral of behavior in that person. Positive reinforcement is also always helpful to the person who's thinking that they're either stuck or will never get out of the rut or circumstances that they're in in a moment. Don't forget number five, express yourself, please. Don't assume that because you're dealing with someone else's strong emotions, your own emotions have no place in the interaction. Match your facial expressions to your felt emotions to let another person know you understand what they're going through. A sincere smile often works wonders. It is also okay to show sadness by crying or to laugh without reservation. A good laugh can be incredibly healing. Number six is show kindness. Give your kindness away without expecting anything back from anyone. Kindness is contagious. The person who are, you are being kind to benefits through your help and you'll feel good uh, and having helped someone. The world is made of a better place through your kindness. Number seven is respect privacy. Be attentive to someone's personal privacy. Protect their dignity. Shut the door, pull the curtain, and don't gossip. Remember that sometimes people just need to go for a walk or see a movie with a friend. Be ready to listen when they want to walk and talk, but also offer a different kind of interaction if they don't want to talk or walk. Uh, and maybe just a lending ear. Number eight is learn how to advocate. An advocate is a person who speaks up for uh, and defends the rights of another person by helping them communicate their needs in a challenging situation, such as a hospital visit. To effectively advocate, you must actively listen to what your friend needs and communicate it in an assertive, respectful manner to help them take advantage of the resources in your community. Number nine is to volunteer. Cultivate compassion through volunteer servicing. Volunteering connects you to others, giving you the opportunity to make you new friends and increase your social skills. Spending time helping people in, uh, is good for your body, your mind, and your soul. And number 10 is consider your words. A very crucial one. Words can actually hurt people. Think before you speak. I, it's, uh, at its heart, compassion is about paying attention to the present moment with a loving attitude. Simply 
things like turning off your cell phone during a personal encounter or sending a thank you note after someone has you over for dinner can go a very long way. Compassion arises through empathy and is characterized by the actions. The simple act of showing compassion can make the world of a difference in somebody else's day and in your own day. You don't need to wait for crisis to practice compassion either. Try smiling at a stranger today. You will feel better. Compassion goes a long way whether it's in your own life or in someone else's life. I show compassion when I talk to customers, whether it's on the phone about eyeglasses. When they tell me that they, they broke their glasses, I don't say, well, you know, it's been two years. They should be broken by now. I show compassion by saying maybe it's because uh, the manufacturer didn't design them properly. And I always show compassion while I'm doing these videos or even when I'm just walking through a store. Compassion will go a long way and you will feel better by practicing it. Don't forget to please, please lead by example in your own home. Show compassion, respect, love to your children by you showing it to your spouse. Don't teach your children to drink, smoke, use profanity, because when you do it at home, they will see it and they will utilize it on the outside. Let today be the first day of your new life. Remember that your children from the age of born, zero, to age 18, every year symbolizes a chapter. You are fully responsible for the first 18 chapters of their life. Show it with compassion, love, and respect. I have an episode coming up on Sunday about respecting elders. Teach your children to respect older people. Not only older people wiser, but they're smarter when it comes to everyday life. Teach your children well. I hope to God you enjoyed this segment, and I hope and I pray to see you real soon. And remember, don't forget to pray to God. And thank God for another beautiful day. May you have a great day. But more importantly, have a sober rest of your life. Have you ever prayed, but never got an answer? And wondered if God was really there? Did you feel all hope was gone? But in his time he came along and answered the prayer you thought was gone. There is no prayer to small, for God hears them all. The answer may not be just what you Just remember, there is no prayer too small. I have read it for you, will ask you shall receive, no matter what it is I steal. just exactly what we need. There is no prayer too small, for God hears them all. The answer may not be just what you want, but He always knows what's right.
just remember 